All right, we are going to take a look at how to install the HP ALM synchronizer server. So the infrastructure that we're working with is a Windows Server 2008, which is running our ALM instance, and a brand new, fresh Windows 2008 R2, what we're looking at right now, that has had nothing installed on it. I'm looking at the URL for our ALM instance on our other server. I have two servers right now that I'm working with. Uh, again, one Windows 2008, one Windows 2008 R2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Tools menu right here. Expand that. More HP ALM add-ins. Expand that. Go to Utility Add-ins. And look for the HP ALM Synchronizer. So before you get started with anything, you'll want to determine the infrastructure that you're synchronizing. Um, and to do that, you'll also want to look out at the technical specifications of the ALM synchronizer. So let's click this link right here and see what we, we get. So right off the bat, we have our supported environments. Following are the server and system configurations for the ALM Synchronizer 1.5 on Windows. So it's a recommended and supported environments for the Synchronizer. Um, and it maintains backward compatibility for those guys. So, number one, what machine are we going to install the Synchronizer server on? Does it meet our CPU and memory free disk space requirements? If so, is it one of these supported environments? Ideally, you're going to be running it on a server that has multiple logins. The way that other windows, such as Windows 8 and 7, handle multiple logins is different than the older versions of Windows. So if it's not here, don't even try to install it. And you'll also note both 32 and 64-bit operating systems are supported. So this is the client side system requirements to run the client that actually sets up the links, not the server itself. You'll notice there's a different set of servers right there. And then the supported environments. You'll want to take a look at which version of ALM you're running. We can sync defects with all of them. Not requirements. Rational ClearQuest. OK with all of those. ALM 11, 11.5.2, 11.12. And then which version of TFS are you running? Okay, it looks like it works for all of them. That's great. And you can do requirements with TFS 2010 and beyond. I'm going to get the synchronizer binaries downloaded and we'll take a look at that. Okay, we're back at the uh, synchronizer page right here. And of course, you're going to want to read all the documentation that you can. So. And along with reading the technical specifications, depending on what version of TFS the team is running, you'll want to take a look at that as well. So let's just say that we are running um, TFS 2013. We'll click on that guy right here. And it'll give you the prerequisites. Before installing TFS Adapter, you must have Microsoft Visual Studio Team Explorer 2012 and Microsoft SQL 2012 installed. You're going to want to make sure that you have all the prerequisites for whatever version you're running. If you're installing another version of the adapter, you'll check that out there. The Microsoft TFS documentation link can be found there. So be sure to read all of that. Then when you're ready and you've found the appropriate binaries, go to the downloads. You'll log into HP and download the appropriate synchronizer servo. You'll need the, your uh, HP SAID to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and get my synchronizer because this demo is just going to show you how to sync defects between two projects. All right, so I've logged into um, HP Live Network. And of course, we have our synchronizer installation guide, um, synchronizer client download, client install guide, synchronizer server download, um, the synchronizer server user guide, and the Synchronizer 11.5 README, and then the TFS adapter. You know, of course, you're going to want to download the version of the Sync server that corresponds with your version of TFS. And then you can view the what's new history right here. So I'm going to go ahead and download these binaries, and 
we'll start up when we're uh, back to installing. Alrighty. Now that we have all of our binaries and install guides downloaded, created a folder on the desktop. You see we have our sync server right here, which I've extracted. There's our setup for that in the media. Um, and we have our sync client right here. I'm going to go ahead and begin the installation. I'll go ahead and accept. Go ahead and see program files, that's fine. And I'll uh, resume recording as soon as it's done installing. Now that the installer is done, it's launched the synchronizer server configuration wizard. We'll go ahead and click next. Select the version of ALM which we want to work with. In our case, we'll do ALM 12. The service configuration, we don't need to run this with a service account. So we'll just go ahead and leave it blank. Configuration information, that's good. And we'll run the configuration. And I'll resume as soon as the configuration is done running. And we'll go ahead and start our synchronizer server service. And start it up successfully. And we'll click finish here. Next, what we'll do is we'll install the sync client. We'll go ahead and run through the install wizard. Now we've got both our server and client installed on our 2008 R2 server. We'll look at the new programs we've installed. And we'll go here and launch our client. I'm going to go ahead and go find out our server name we need to connect to. One moment, I'll be right back. Unfortunately, I'm actually running a little bit short on time right now for this first recording. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll stop this recording at the installation and understanding of uh, the install components of the synchronization server. And I will resume uh, with an explanation of the synchronizer client and setting up map files. Thank you for watching.